So this will be part two, a follow-up of uh, that Ultra Life uh, Blue Green Algae Slime Stain Remover, and I'll show you how well it worked. Um, and there's a little bit of back and forth between another uh, one of my tank friends, uh, and I, I'm a little, I'm a little, uh, well, I don't know, I'm just a little amazed uh, if what he says is true how they can get away with, uh, you know, what he's uh, implying on the labeling. You know, I used to have a, a California Department of Pesticide Regulation qualified applicators license. Um, and I used to have to go to meetings regularly for continuing education. And I know labeling's a big deal for pesticides. And technically uh, this stuff is a pesticide because it's, you know, it's supposed to be an algicide. And what he's saying is, this product has both the erythromycin, which is a, a, an antibiotic, uh, a bactericide, and uh, an algicide. And according to their label, it does not contain that. And I went looking for something called an MSDS sheet, a material that's redundant, material data, or pardon me, a material data, because data was an Android, right? Uh, and safety sheet, uh, and it, they won't say what's in it because it's proprietary. It's it's a secret formula. That's exactly what it says. And I'll go find the link and I'll put that in the description so you can read what, what that looks like. Um, but anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you and we'll, uh, we'll get right into the follow-up on how this stuff worked. And then I will show you just a huge mistake I made somewhere in the process. It didn't cost me any fish or invertebrates, but it cost it cost plants. So anyway, on we go. I guess I should have videoed this before I started scraping. I'm cleaning tanks today, doing Saturday, the 14th of September. And uh, this is one of the tanks that I treated with Ultra Life Blue Green Slime Remover. And it has done the trick all across the gravel or the sand. Uh, it's all dead. There's still one little patch on top of the sponge filter right there, but there's a big patch on this side wall that's all gone and just coming off and that's what's floating in the water right now. Um, and then this sponge filter's filled with uh, black beard. So I think I'm gonna pull it and just soak it in bleach for a while and see if that'll take care of that. And it'll also take care of that last little bit of cyanobacteria there. What I should also say is uh, I treated originally Let's see, yesterday was the 13th, the 11th, and then 48 hours later, 12th, 13th, I treat it again. And then it says, don't treat again for two weeks. And I, well, the way it looks, I don't think I'll need to. I just wish I could get rid of the blackbeard algae in here. I saw somebody say that Godiads uh, eat blackbeard algae. I, 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 we'll see. I don't know. I don't have any, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. Well, let me show you the other tank that I treated as well. This one's gotten quite cloudy overnight. Uh, did that second treatment. A lot of the mommy looking stuff on the pots because they didn't get treated. Or let me rephrase that. They didn't get cleaned out like the whole tank did. So I will, um, I'll do a water change on this tank to clear up the, the cloudiness a bit. Maybe about a 50% water change. All right, so here we are. It is Sunday the 15th and uh, I think that's about 24 hours after the second treatment. And it said treat if necessary after 40 or yeah, 48 hours. So I did because there was still uh, the blue green algae on that sponge filter, if you remember. But it looks like it did a job on all the blue green algae that was down below on the gravel or sand or both. And so I'm thinking it worked. I'm not going to do a water change. Uh, I'm going to use the gravel vac and suck up as much of that mulm as, as possible. Uh, and then that'll only take the water down a little bit and I've got some evaporation going on. So I will top it off as opposed to doing a full, full tilt water change for this one. But I will say, I think that uh, Ultra Life Blue Green Slime Stain Remover did the trick wasn't terribly expensive. I got it on Amazon. I think I, I mentioned that already. And I think it was about 12 and change for the little bottle. And there's a bunch of treatments in it. Uh, it was two little scoops 
uh, mixed in water for every 15 gallons, I think is what it said. So anyway, if you're having a blue-green algae problem, it's worth a try. If I remember correctly, it was, you know, it's supposed to be for salt water use. Um, it says it's safe for uh, arthropods. And last I saw floating around in here were still a uh, couple of mono shrimp that I have. Um, so I'm going to say, yeah, safe for arthropods. I don't know where they are right now. They, they are elusive little buggers. They're around here somewhere. Well, now we're 48 hours after the second dose. I changed out the sponge filter with all the blackbeard algae on it. And if you recall, it still had a spot of uh, uh, the cyanobacteria on it, kind of cent centered there between the edge of the sponge and the plastic uh, uplift tube. And uh, then yesterday I gravel vacked and got out a lot of the, the old sludge from the blue-green algae that had died off. So here we are 48 hours later and it's looking pretty good. Uh, I scraped the glass down. Uh, it was pretty much all dead. So I, I just scraped it all off, uh, picked it up with uh, a lot of it that settled with the gravel back. And then I put this hang on back filter in here to suck up a lot of the stuff that was in the water, uh, you know, after scraping. So I think what I'm gonna do now, you know, maybe not. I was gonna maybe do a water change now because I, I did all my water changes yesterday except this tank. But I think I'll just hold off on this one until the next, next cycle of water changes. Maybe I'll test the parameters and see, let's do that. We'll use one of these uh, API test strips. It doesn't test for ammonia though, so we may have to do that separately. But I'm guessing the pH stayed about the same because on, on the label it said it could affect the pH probably still about 7.5 so a couple swipes get the bottle back down because I put it up there and I'm gonna set it here on this this old rag and the pH is the middle one so it's somewhere around uh, between 7.5 and 7.0 uh, but I will do an ammonia test let's do that all right so I thought I'd do the pH also and it looks like it's still somewhere normal for me, 7.5, somewhere around there. Uh, and it does look like the ammonia's picked up a little bit. So maybe I will do that water change today. I'm not as worried about the nitrates because the plants will take that up. And I was on a live stream not too long ago and we were talking about nitrates and, and, and most people agreed that higher nitrates have never killed fish unless they're really, really high. Um, so I'm not too worried about that. I'm more uh, concerned about the ammonia because that will burn the gills and that'll burn their soft tissue and we don't want that to happen. So we're gonna do a water change today just to be safe. So anyway, that's, I think we'll call that a wrap on this. I'm gonna say, yeah, this stuff works. If somebody asked, you know, would you do it again? Yes. Uh, it really seemed to do the trick with the cyanobacteria in this, uh, in my juvenile beta tank. They don't seem to be any worse for the wear. I'm happy with this stuff. It wasn't terribly expensive. Uh, Amazon, I think it was 13 bucks for the box. And it'll, uh, treats up to 150 gallons, it says. So, uh, it was uh, two of the little spoonfuls per 15 gallons. Mix it in water, tank water. And then just uh, put it back, uh, pour it back into the tank. And do that twice in, in a 48 hour period. Boy, I hate this. Apparently you can overdose with um, hydrogen peroxide. I think that's probably what did it. I put all these plants in a two gallon bucket because I had that cyanobacteria in here. And I used the same tank water just so they wouldn't dry out. But then I dumped about a half a cup of peroxide in the bucket to kill the algae, the cyanobacteria. Um, and left them in there just for a couple hours and put them back in this tank, added that water back and, uh, shit. Um, and then I put that, that ultra life, I think is what it's called for blue green algae. Well, it took care of that, but I don't know if it's a combination of the two or just the peroxide, but it melted all the crypts and it melted these little, uh, other crypts in front crypt parva. 
and I had one surviving Blixa here in this pot and this uh, little Amazon sword, I don't think it's gonna make it. And I think it killed the Sawasatang that was in here too. Um, all these Java ferns and all came in after the fact, after, uh, after I did a water change on the tank day before yesterday. So they're all right. Um, but it also took out my uh, big wad of Christmas moss that was looking so good. Oh boy. So yeah, note to self, don't overdose with the peroxide. So I guess what I'll do is just leave everything as it is and may, maybe roots survived and maybe they'll re-sprout. Might be a while. I'll vacuum off all the, the dead stuff or pull it out or whatever. But yeah, what a screw up. What a screw up. Let them learn. And I know where I can get a bunch more crypts to start over if I need to. I do have to replace these crypt parvas, the little small ones, because I like those. Uh, they were tissue culture. It was a little pot of maybe five or six clumps. They're a little on the pricey side. I think they're about 23 bucks. Regardless, gotta have plants. But anyway, like I always say, tanks for looking.